Passionist Nuns, we were founded back in the 1700s in Tarquinia in Italy uh, by St. Paul of the Cross. In 1910, they came to America. Five sisters came over to America and they came to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Then the nuns spread to Erlanger, Kentucky in 47. Good morning. My name is Sister Mary Angela and I'm a Passionist Nun. We live here, the community and I, there are eight of us, here on Donaldson Highway in Erlanger, Kentucky. And this is the place where the wafers are made for Holy Communion. And I've heard that you'll be making your Holy Communion, your first Holy Communion, very soon. So I thought you might be interested in knowing how we make those wafers and just what we go through in order to produce these wafers so that you'll be able to receive your First Holy Communion. Well, you'll notice I've changed my habit. We wear a blue habit when we work with the altar breads because we have so much flour, and you can imagine what that would do to a black habit. But if you'll join me right now, I'll show you the altar bread process. We mix the batter. It's just plain water and flour mixed together just to the right consistency, like a thick cream. We make enough to keep us baking for about four hours. That's every day except Friday and Sunday. Okay, now we just turn that little lever and start filling the buckets. We'll get five full buckets and maybe a little bit left over. Then you just put a ladle on Close it down, and these lights will go on because that means the temperature is not where you want it. So when the temperature gets where you want it and the bread is done, the lights will go off again. So then we just go to the next one. We have our stoves, we have six stoves or bakers. They're like a griddle or a waffle iron. Like a waffle iron except we have a little cutter on it, which waffle iron doesn't have. It'll trim it for us. Because we used to trim them with a pair of scissors on the old stoves. We bake these thin sheets. They're about 14 inches across, 14 inches in diameter. Stack them up with onion skin paper between each sheet. The paper is to keep them from sticking together when we dampen them overnight, because it takes 24 hours to dampen a, um, a day's cutting. And they usually stick together if you don't have something to separate them. On these breads, on the top plate, are little kiros. It's the symbol meaning Christ. And we put that on our host because, of course, once the priest says the words of consecration, it is the body of Christ. When the priest says, and he's talking in Jesus' name, when he says, this is my body, that bread, even though it still looks like bread, and it tastes like bread, it's not bread. Because what made it bread isn't there anymore. What, what made it look like bread is there, but what made it bread, actually bread, it's not there. And what makes Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Mary, what makes Jesus, Jesus, is there. So we simply put that symbol on there to remind us, even when the breads, when we're baking the breads, what they're going to be. They're going to become the body of Jesus. And that helps to, for us to keep in mind that this is a wonderful sacred work that we're doing so that we can, even as we're preparing the bread, we're, we're loving Jesus and we're wanting him to bless us and to bless everyone who receives him when these breads are consecrated. Sister Paul will come down and take the dampened breads out of the humidifier so that we can start the cutting. The dampening is just enough to get them soft enough. It, just makes them soft enough to cut. Otherwise, if you cut it right from the stove, they would all crack. 
she gets the breads out and puts them in stacks of 72. Out of one stack of breads, I can get 4,500 hosts. And I will cut six of those stacks in a morning. So it's about 25,000 breads every day that we cut. This is 500 in this tub here. We cut them in lots of 1,000 or lots of 500. Pretty soon I'll have to get another. So I've got about, about 4,500 out of one stack here. When they're dry, I just put them in a bag. Once they're cut, put into containers, they have to dry a little bit. Put it in And then sister comes down and bags them. And then we pack them up for the different parishes. These are out, ready to go in the mail. At every mass, where our altar breads go, we're there too. Our prayer is there. We, we've, we've prepared the bread for Jesus to take and make into himself so that he can come to you. So in that way, we help to bring Jesus to you and that, that's part of our life. I was getting ready for my first communion and I knew what I wanted. And I asked him at my first communion, please let me be a nun, I wanna be a nun. Well, we had sisters as teachers, you know, and I just, I was always attracted to them. So I asked him, one of our teachers said, well, if you ask Jesus, whatever you ask him for in your first communion, seriously, he'll give it to you. Well, I knew what I was gonna ask him and I did. When I came back to my place, you know, you'll come back and make you say your prayer and all that. And I made sure that I asked him, please make me a sister, and he did. Well, now that you've seen the altar bread process and you've seen a little bit of the monastery, I thought you might like to see something of our yard. We have a beautiful grounds here and we, we have an opportunity to enjoy the outside just as you do. We have flowers and trees and we have a fish pond. So uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for viewing our process. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And before we leave, I'd like to remind you once more of the great gift you're going to be getting on your First Communion Day. And I want you to always remember that Jesus loves you. And the reason he gives himself to you in Holy Communion is so that he can be closer to you and that you can come to know him better and know him as a real friend. And he'll be with you even though the communion host will dissolve. And so Jesus will not be with you in his body all the time. He's always with you in your heart. And he wants you to enjoy your, your enjoyments and he wants you to suffer whatever you have to suffer with him. Know that he's with you as your friend. He loves you very much. And he wants to spend your life with you here on earth so that as you grow and as you become closer to him in, in loving him, someday he can take you with him in heaven and where we'll all know one another. We won't need cameras to meet you and we won't need letters, we won't need telephones, but we can know one another as friends just the way Jesus knows you. So know that we're always praying for you here. Passionist nuns are here to pray for everyone, especially those in our diocese, and know that we love you. We keep you, your parents, and your friends, and all your needs in our prayers, and pray for us once in a while, too. Thank you very much, and God bless you.